is MapReduce a part of Hadoop or is it bigger than Hadoop? So we are talking about MapReduce. So now how did this term MapReduce came? Let me document those things for you. So MapReduce actually came from a uh, functional programming language called as Lisp. So in a functional programming, uh, uh, a functional programming language called as Lisp, in which there was a function called as map and a reduce function. So what is functional programming? In functional programming, uh, there is no importance of state and no state is maintained. Whereas in object-oriented programming, uh, all the importance is given to the state. Whereas in functional programming, functions are given more importance as the way how it would work. To get a good understanding about what is MapReduce, how did it actually come up with respect to Hadoop, you should look at the white paper. So let me go down and search for MapReduce white paper. This came about in the year 2003. Uh, sorry, GFS came in 2003. This came in the year 2004. So please download this white paper by uh, uh, Jeff Dean, and you will get a good understanding about how things are. This is the download link for <coughs> Jeff's white paper. So that is what is the concept of MapReduce. So that's how the whole thing starts. So now, what is this Map and Reduce? At a very high level, in the Map phase, <coughs> you will pick what you want from a record. And in the Reduce phase, you will <coughs> aggregate the results across multiple uh, nodes where mapper was executed. That's it. This is at a very, very high level. So in a map phase, you will have to aggregate from a record. So you will have to identify what is the record. Okay? And in the reduce phase, you, ag spelling is wrong. Aggregate. Ag Regate, yeah, that's better. Okay, so you will actually sum up the results across multiple nodes. So this is what is MapReduce. Okay, MapReduce can be written in any language. It can be written in Perl, Python, Ruby, PHP, and of course Java. It was only two days back uh, Google had open sourced MapReduce for C. Yeah, you heard me right. Just two days back, I myself saw this on uh, February 14th, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, February, not 14th, February 24th or something. So let me go ahead and uh, search that. Uh, map, radius, in C. <coughs> so let me scroll down. There it is, th three days ago. Google open sources map radius framework for C uh, to run native code in Hadoop. Okay, it was just last week that I had seen this because I definitely remember it was on a Thursday or a Friday uh, I had read this article. So this is that article, February 18th, they had actually done that. So it came up in InfoQ, so see here. So this is the uh, blog which shows you how Google had open source MapReduce for C programming. <coughs> so let me show that to you, put it over here. There we go. You can have a look at that. So there are multiple ways in which you can run your MapReduce. So that is what is the base. Okay. So now uh, coming back to and MapReduce is going to be there is there in Java 8. Okay. So MapReduce as a design pattern has already come up in a Java 8 also. So in this module you will see what all are the use cases where MapReduce is used. What is the difference between the old way how we used to process and the new way using MapReduce? Look at, of course, the uh, MapReduce architecture and components. Understand the execution flow of your MapReduce applications and implement the basic MapReduce concepts. Okay, so now for people who are looking at specifically for YARN, there is a very good book called as Apache YARN uh, by Arun Murthy. So I had the honor of uh, a meeting up with Arun Murthy and having a beer with him when we were there in 2008, okay, at uh, San Jose. So Arun Murthy is the founder of a book called as Apache Yan. Suddenly I remembered it is. The name of the book is Apache Yan by Arun Murthy. 
he is the co-founder of Hortonworks. So uh, this is a good book on yarn. So if you wanted to know more about yarn, because each one of them is a very deep thing, you know. So you will have to look at these things if you really want to dive deep. Okay, then we will talk about the execution flow of yarn, how to implement basic MapReduce concepts, and run a MapReduce program. So let's quickly revise. We know what all are the cluster files. We have seen what are the XML files. There is core hyphen side, HDFS, YARN, and MapReduce. What all are the data loading techniques? And there are three modes in which Hadoop can be deployed. What are the three modes in which Hadoop can be deployed, guys? It can be deployed in a standalone mode. It can be deployed in a pseudo mode, or else it can be deployed in a fully distributed mode. So this is something that we have just seen right now. Data analysis can be done using PIG, using Hive, uh, uh, using an import can be uh, data loading of data into HDFS can be done using Hadoop commands, Flume, and Scoop. So the JDK path should be set in which file? One, two, three, four. But then yes, the Java home is typically done in your Hadoop-ENV.sh. In, in if you wanted to run Java from multiple locations on the client also, it will also be there in the Bash profile also. Okay, guys? So please remember it will be there in environment.xml file as well as in the Bash profile. So you can see over here, since everything is uh, done in Java, the Java runtime environment is a very important environment variable. And this variable directs Hadoop daemon to the Java path in the system. This is a very tricky question. Where do I specify the IP address? Uh, I mean, uh, whose IP address I specify it in the master's file? It is the right answer is actually secondary name node. It is not the name node. The name node IP will be there in core hyphen site. The name is a the uh, misnomer. The master's file, by looking at it, you think it is the master node, whereas it is actually the secondary name node. Only four or five of you got it right. Others, please be careful. So this is a very tricky question, which is going to be a part of a certification. So please remember that. So the default Hadoop configuration runs the secondary name node on a physical machine. So in a large multi-node cluster, the secondary name node runs on a different physical machine. The secondary name node requirements are typically the same as that of the name node. There we go. So in <coughs> Gen 1 or even in Gen 2, is secondary name node the hard backup for the name node? True or false? So secondary name node is typically the most misunderstood component in the HDFS architecture. It is not a hot backup, but only a checkpointing node. Good friends. There we go. So whenever you are trying to import data from MySQL to HDFS using Scoop, what are the things that you might need? OK, do you need all of the above? That is the IP address, uh, a database, and the table name, or only the IP address and the database? I know you haven't worked on Scoop, but then this is just to uh, make you think on something that I have said earlier. Right answer is all of the above. Whenever you are connecting uh, to a uh, database, you need all of the above, friends. The IP, of course, I would need because that will be a part of the connection string. The database and the uh, table name would be, uh, the database name will also be a part of the connection string. And then you would need the driver. So for downloading data using Flume, one needs to have an agent that is running on the source side. The agent requires three information to fulfill the task. What do you think are the three things what an agent would need, friend? So these are the three things that is mandatorily required. I would need a source. So now let's get down to our MapReduce. So MapReduce, where is it used? Any kind of processing of data in your HDFS uh, uh, needs MapReduce. So MapReduce can be used everywhere. But here we are just showing you some examples of it. It can be used in weather forecasting, where the maximum temperature recorded per year can be used. It can be used to de-identify the personal health information. So we have got some data sets that is there for the weather and for healthcare that you will have to download. So please go through all the assignments and the stuff that is in Module 3. So this is uh, the place where MapReduce is going to be used. Now, 
<coughs> let's go ahead and see what is the traditional way how the data was processed. Supposing if you are having a very big data, you wanted to do uh, analysis of that huge amount of data. So the way how you can do that, if you are talking about writing your own program is you will uh, explicitly split the data into smaller chunks. So who is responsible for splitting the data? We have to write a code for splitting the data. I am talking about a non-Hadoop uh, environment. Then you will do grep. That means you will look through the splitted data, small chunks of data. You will match uh, what is the thing that I want to find it out. And then you will write everything into another file. So just imagine you had to do all of these things in a code. So that is how we were doing it in a traditional environment. So now, what is the way how the new environment would be looking like is what we are going to see. So if you look at the MapReduce way, okay, the framework takes care of uh, splitting the data. So whenever you load the data, it is already broken into different chunks. And even in one chunk of 128 MB, the framework will identify what is a record. Remember I told you for any analysis, you have to understand what is a record. So the framework will identify what is a record. You will write your map function where you will see what you want to pick from the record. Then the uh, reduce will aggregate what all of them is doing. And then finally, it will put it into a separate file. Hey, uh, no, uh, uh, two things. When you say chunks, let me go back. What I meant is the very big amount of data is broken. There are, there are two types of splits that is here. <clears throat> let me go ahead and explain. There are two splits, S-P-L-I-T-S, in MapReduce, in Hadoop. Point A is a block split. Block split happens, S-P-L-I-T, block split happens when uh, the file is stored into the cluster, okay? Then you will have a term called as input split, okay? Input split is typically done when uh, the file is analyzed analyzed L Y S E D. okay? So these are the two splits that we have. So please understand this uh, 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 clearly. There is a block split and there is a input split, okay? So now, why do I need MapReduce? <coughs> the biggest advantage of MapReduce is you take the processing to the data, okay? And processing of the data is going to happen in parallel, okay? So look at this diagram that we are having over here. We are just showing you three racks. Each one of them is a node. Okay. Then the blue one is what is a map task and the HDFS block is what is in green. What are we trying to show over here is who processes what. Typically we know the fact that a code is going to go to the data, right? So the first way what it will do is uh, it will go ahead and uh, uh, process the data. If uh, the code will go down to the actual node, see there's a reason why we have got three separate tracks to show you three use cases. We are going to look at the first one right now, okay? So here in the first one, what am I trying to say here is that particular HDFS block is processed by the, the A that I'm showing is processed by the map task. That is what typically happens. But in some cases, what might happen is that there is no processing capability that is there for me. So what might happen is this is another use case that we are showing. What am I highlighting right now? That is B. Okay. So the block on one node might be processed by a map task that is running on another node. So yes, the code is going to move to the data. There is going to be no data movement anywhere. Okay, that is what is the use case that I'm saying. In the worst case scenario is what would be C. So you will have a block on one node, okay, in one rack, okay, that is processed by another rack. Yeah, by the processor that is there on another rack. Why? Because all the nodes in that rack is busy. So we are showing you three separate ways how the processing can happen. 
typically what is the advantage of MapReduce? The processing goes to the code. Right, friend? So here, what is the arrow going to say? The HDFS block is going to be processed by them. Yes, the arrow could have been different, but then what are we trying to communicate over here is who does the processing. So we were talking about uh, MapReduce. So this is an example that we are going to see as to how do we use MapReduce when we are talking about uh, an example of de-identifying your uh, uh, data. That means if you are having a healthcare use case and if you wanted to de-identify the, some of the information what is there in the uh, files, how do I do it? So typically you would use Scoop to move the data from your transactional data store. Then <coughs> you will be doing some filtering. So Scoop via some filtering, that is what matches is you will put the data into HDFS. Once the data is in HDFS, you will read that uh, file <coughs> from HDFS in the map phase. You will apply the map logic on that uh, particular data, like for example, deciding what you want. So let's take an example of the transaction data that I had shown it to you earlier. So we had a data called as TXNS, right? Transactions data. So imagine if this is what is going to be your transaction data. I have got 1 million rows over here. So if you wanted to analyze the sum of sales in Tennessee, so how do I do that? So what is the record over here, folks? Like I said, the most important thing is uh, it will break up the file into chunks based on your input split. Then in one input split, you will have multiple records, right? So what is a record over here, folks? How do I identify a record? A record is nothing but a new line character, right? So typically, in a comma-separated value, a row is what is a record, end of line. The end of line is a record separator. A end of line is what is a record. So once you get a record, in the map phase, what will you do? You will decide what I want from the record. Like for example, this is a fixed with uh, comma separated value. So I know the column separator. I will pick up the state and I'll pick up the amount. Then I'll check if the state is Tennessee. Then only I'm interested in that. And that is what will happen parallelly on both the nodes. Then, so let me go back, yeah, there we go. So that is what will happen parallelly on both the nodes. Then there would be a reduce logic. So what will the reduce logic uh, be? It will uh, aggregate the data that is happening parallelly on two separate nodes, and the result will be stored into HDFS. Standard way how a map reduce process will work, friends, okay? So the input is going to be in HDFS. You will write a map and a reduce program, and the result of that will also be stored into HDFS. So let's move on. So now let's look at your Gen 2 architecture with reference to what is a application master, what is a container, what is a node manager, and what is a resource manager, OK? So in this example, what are we doing? You have got a client. Who is a client? Who is somebody outside the cluster? <clears throat> the client will communicate with the resource manager because analysis uh, uh, master is a resource manager. The resource manager will come to know from the no, uh, name node the, as to where the actual nodes are there, where the data is. So let's assume in this example, the data is there in the data node one. So what will it do? It will start <coughs> the application master. So the application master is one per job. So that is going to be running in a container like I told you yesterday. Then it would get the work done by the map task, which is also running in a container that is nothing but a JVM that is there on the node manager. On which all nodes will the uh, application master start the uh, actual job? On the nodes wherever the data is. So in our example that we had seen earlier in our day2.txt, let me go back to my day2.txt wherein we have done the uh, example of processing. Not this. I think it was in day3. Give me one sec. No, where did I show the architecture? Let me go back to day2. Yeah, there it is. So if this is what is the use case that we had uh, last time. So you have a master. 
the master uh, that means the client will this is the example the client will communicate with the resource manager resource manager will uh, speak to the name node he will know that the data is there on 7 and 8 so tell me guys where will the app master be started App master is the one that will be uh, uh, responsible for no uh, uh, applications manager. Uh, application manager is a part of the resource manager, whereas application master is separate. Application master will be running on any of the nodes where the data is not present. It will try its best to see that. It can also run on a node where the data is there, but then just to ensure that it is separate, it will try to run on a node where the data is not there. So from 1 to 12, it can run on any node wherever the data is not present. Okay, guys? <clears throat> then where will the actual container for map task run? It will run on 7 and 8. And where can the reduce run? it can run on any of the nodes from 1 to 12 okay so this is what is at a high level the map reduce process let me again explain that to you with the diagram so i have got a client who wants to access the file that is 200 mb file that we have created file 1 so uh, the client will submit a request to the resource manager the resource manager will get the details from the node manager then the applications manager which is a part of the master will start the application master okay where will the application master be started off on any of the nodes wherever the data is let me do one thing let me copy this and put it into the day 4.txt and then explain the steps okay so what what will be the first step that will be there the first step will be the client communicates with the resource manager okay <clears throat> who will uh, in turn uh, talk to the name node to get the block locations let me do a word wrap here okay then what is the second step the applications manager in the resource manager will start the app master for that application what is an application nothing but a job okay application on a node where the data is not present okay then the app master app master will start the container on the node where the data is present so in my example, it will be there on 7 and 8. So this is the way how the processing would happen, folks. So you can see over here, the resource manager will start the application master in a container. The application master will start the map task on a node wherever the data is. And the reduce task can be there on any node in the cluster. Let me document that also so that there is no confusion. Then fourth, the reduce task can be executed in a container can be executed in any container uh, in on any node not specific to the node where the date where the uh, mapper uh, task was performed was performed okay so this is a very important part of your architecture, guys, the way how the whole map reduce process would look. Okay, two is uh, uh, there will be an applications manager that you know, Manish uh, Malikarjan. Applications manager is a part of the resource manager who is responsible for starting the app master. You'll see it in a couple of slides right now more, uh, friend. It'll make it more clear. In this slide, there is no applications manager, but it will be there. Let me show that to you. So let's move on now. So see over here, what all are the components that we have in our MapReduce? A client, who is a client? A guy who will submit the MapReduce job. Who is a resource manager? A cluster level resource manager who is responsible for managing all applications in the stuff. So then you will have a node manager. Who is a node manager? Node manager is running on the node wherever the data is. It is one per data node and it monitors resources on the data node. What is the job history server? It creates, uh, maintains information about the submitted map reduce jobs after their map app master terminates. Till that time, the app master will have that. 
what is application master? One per application. It is of short life. It coordinates and manages the MapReduce job, negotiates with the resource manager to schedule tasks, and the tasks are started by the node manager. What is a container? Container is created by the name node when requested. It allocates certain amount of resources on the slave node. So these are the different uh, components what we are having. Applications manager is not a domain. It is a component inside the resource manager. It is a Java process, but you don't see the process ID because it's not a daemon. You will have only one application manager running per cluster. Like the way you can have only one resource manager per cluster, you can have only one application manager per cluster. You will see it in a diagram as we go ahead, guys. Okay? So now, uh, let's go ahead and see, uh, once we finish up this, how to run the MapReduce application on the YARN framework. This is the complete uh, execution flow, folks. Whenever you do any job, that is any Hadoop jar, the name of the jar file, there would be a job submission phase. There would be a job initialization phase. Every job will be broken into multiple tasks based on the blocks. There would be memory assignment. Then it will look out for status updates to see whether the task has happened or not. And then finally, in case of a failure recovery, it will take care of failure recovery. This is the complete uh, life cycle of a application execution. We are actually going to see that in a se series of steps now. So there we go. So, there are totally 12 steps, and we are going to sh show it across four slides, three slides. So, let's look at the first one. Where do you run the job? On the client. You have got an application. So, whenever you say Hadoop jar, the name of the jar file, the name of the application, the parameters, uh, the uh, job gets executed on the client side, it will go down to the resource manager and get a application ID. Then it would go ahead and copy whatever is the job resources that is needed on HDFS. So that it will be picked up by the uh, actual. Remember we said about code moving to data, right? So the code, uh, the job resources, XML file, etc. is placed on HDFS so that everybody can access it. And then it submits an application to the resource manager. These are very simple four steps that would happen at the first time whenever you say Hadoop jar, the name of the jar file. Uh, we ran a Terrajan example today, right? So all of these things happen at the time when it gets started. <coughs> Submit application is not nothing but typing that line Hadoop jar, the name of the jar file. That is what is the meaning of submitting the application. <coughs> a new application means, look, look at let, let's get down to the uh, job tracker. Hold on. Let me go down to the Edureka VM. We have run an example, right? So that's the reason I ran that example. We can reuse the same example. Let me scroll up. <clears throat> Let me maximize this. It will be easier for us. So you can see over here that I said Hadoop jar so and so. This is what is submitting the application on the client side. What does it do? It connects to the resource manager. Then it uh, generates using two splits because that is what the logic is inside the code. Then it submits token for the job. See here, submit, submit the, the application to the resource manager. This is what is the meaning of submitted application to the resource manager. Then it runs a job. And this is what is going to be the job ID. And this is what is the map and the reduced task that will be there. Once it's finished, it will say job is completed. So what is an application? Nothing but this whole process of Hadoop jar, the name of the jar file, is what is called as submitting the application. So now, after he submits the application, who will start the app master container? So step one, two, three, how do they get it initiated? Step four is submitting the command. Guys, you are thinking of actually, see, when I type that line, Hadoop jar, the name, let me go back for one last time and I'll show it to you. Look at the way how it is happening. Whenever I type this, you are just submitting the application. <coughs> see over here? Connecting to the resource manager, and then you see submitted application to the resource manager, right? So after I connect to the resource manager, am I not getting a job ID? And then you are seeing submitted application, right? So what happens over here, my dear friends, is this command that you are typing is what initiates it. 
it goes to the resource manager and gets a job ID and then that application is submitted when what do you mean submitting the application is nothing but moving the jar uh, resources to HDFS and then just a confirmation is sent to the resource manager that the, uh, the resources have been moved to the HDFS right that is the way how it should be so this submit application is nothing but it sh uh, you can read it as submitted the application okay so who starts the uh, application uh, master <coughs> it is the it's the resource manager who starts application master no okay it is going to be your applications manager who starts the uh, application master now the applications manager start your application master container where will it start on a node wherever the data is uh, uh, not present right okay then that is step number five what is step number six once the application master has uh, done so actually it would have been very good in case if this was two separate uh, slides this box that you see over here if you have kept it separately it would have been fantastic so <clears throat> let's assume this uh, let me try to explain it in a different way the same example so I have got let's say one two three four I've just got four nodes and trying to make it as simple as possible so that you don't get confused so the applications manager will start the app application app master on the node wherever the data is not present right app master will be started on a node where the data is not present are we clear till now sorry control Z are we clear till this so the data is not on this I am still talking about my node wherever my 60 uh, 128 and uh, uh, how much 72 MB will be my 128 MB is here my 72 MB is here okay so that is what is shown to you in your slide number five slide number six the app master will tell the node manager to create a container which node manager am I talking about here to create a container let me go back to the PDF app master is running on node number one which node manager will it tell it to create a container so it will tell the node manager on 213 to start the container because the data is over there right so then step number seven is done then what will the app master do it will get the input splits that is nothing but whatever is the data from HDFS okay that is step number seven then it will ask for resources from the resource manager step number eight okay and then step number nine the node manager just says that I have started the container it's not start container it has it will give a confirmation that the container has been started King, what will happen when all data is on all the HDFS nodes where would the app master start uh, it would try to start it on the node wherein the least amount of data is there and if you again assume uh, all the nodes have got the exactly the same amount of data then the proximity is considered so this is the way how the architecture diagram talks about it so now let's go ahead then what it does <coughs> it, it will node number uh, 10 is uh, uh, the node manager will actually confirm and start the what is this task JVM nothing but your map task and the reduce task it will go ahead and uh, uh, create the containers then step number 11 is each of the reduce task will also have to get the code remember we said about code moving to data right so this is where the code was the code is going to go down to the place where the data is so the map task will actually acquire the code and it will execute it in the yarn child that the that is nothing but the container where the actual job has happened okay so a container is just creating the JVM for you 
it is nothing but creating the resources for you and then inside that resources is where you will have the actual processing going to happen so who is going to take care of uh, a, a contact, communicating with that and doing everything it is the individual node manager wherever the young child is going to run so what will the node manager do? He'll take care of resource management. So in my example, node number two and three is where the map task will run. Reduce will typically be executed on four, or it could be on two, three, or four, or wherever it is. So now the question would be, what does this create container, what you saw on your step number 10, and what does this uh, create container that you see on step number 10? Uh, create container is the information that has been passed by the app master to the node manager to start the containers okay so the node manager on your two and three is where it is requesting for it to start the containers okay it will go ahead and give a confirmation on step number nine that okay I have started the container and step number ten is just again confirming to you that again the containers are actually created and allocated here you're saying I want the containers to be there and here the containers are actually get, getting a confirmation that the containers are created and the execution happens this is what is the complete end-to-end -end flow of a map reduce thing <coughs> okay let's go ahead so now after execution now in case if you want to poll the status who would know uh, uh, where is the application running or what are the status of course the app master will know so the job the client will poll the app master how will the app master get the information from the map reduce task which will update the app master and the app master will let the information go back to the job object now let's take an example guys the job has finished now where do I see the details of the job guys? This is happening at the time when the job is running. What would happen if the job has finished and I wanted to see where do I get it? The history server. The job status in the URL will be there only till the time the job is running. The result of the job would be there in your HDFS. Okay, so now this particular slide will make it clear for you whatever I have been talking about it. So the resource manager will have a scheduler. There are different types of schedulers that is there. It will have an applications manager. So for a particular job that is your uh, app master one, the node manager where the data is not there is where the app master is running. It will start the container that is 1.1 and 1.2 on the nodes wherever the data is. Similarly, app master 2 is running on another node where the data is not there. It will start with 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 that is the containers on the nodes wherever the data is. So this should make it very clear as to whatever I have said right now, friends. Good. Let's move on. So if you wanted to get a even more better understanding, we are trying to do that with a sequence example. See, we try our best to make the thing simpler, but then this is a complicated topic. So we, we try our best. So see over here, this client submits an application to the resource manager. The resource manager will start the application master on a particular node. <clears throat> then the uh, application manager registers with the resource manager so that it will ask for resources. Then the application master asks for containers from the resource manager. Uh, uh, that means when I say ask for containers from the resource manager, it will tell the node manager to start the container. Okay, so when I said ask for containers means tell give me a place where I can get the resources working. After registering it is asking for those resources. Then the application master will tell the node managers to launch the containers. Which are these containers? Node 2 and 3 in our example. <coughs> then the application code is executed in the container. That is a map reduce code. The yarn code is executed on two and three. So in my example, the application master is on one. Let me go back to my example. And the uh, containers are in two and three. The code is executed in two and three. Then the client can communicate with the resource manager or the application manager to monitor the status of it. So he can communicate with the resource manager who will in turn talk to the application master or he can also talk to the application master directly to get the details of the job. 
I hope this is pretty self-explanatory, friends. So I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. So now, after the job is finished, what should happen? The application master will unregister with the resource manager, and the details are sent to the job history server. Okay? Hey, now, enough of theory, and he is back again. So, YARN was developed to overcome which of the advantage of your Hadoop 1? We are specifically talking about YARN and I'm not talking about HDFS over here. One, two, three. Of course, not a single point of failure because that is the HDFS part of it. It could be two or three also. So the most closest is three because primarily because there is a lot of uh, burden on the job tracker. But then if, even if somebody says two, I would uh, also agree with that because you were able to run only MapReduce in your earlier versions, whereas now you can run Spark, Storm, Graph, etc. Although Annie says the answer is three, but I will still agree that two is also correct. Let me go back. So if anybody gives me two also, I will consider that. That's correct, because anything can be executed on YARN. That's correct. So I, I would agree both two and three. Then in YARN, the functionality of the job tracker is replaced by which of the YARN components. Look at what is the job of the job tracker. It was taking care of resource management and the life cycle management, right? Okay? Make sense? So that is what you'll have to look out for. Uh, what is considered as a life cycle management, you'll have to be careful. So does it take care of uh, uh, job scheduling? No, there was a scheduler who will take care of it. Does it take care of task monitoring? There is nothing but a life cycle? Yes. Does it take care of the resource management? Yes. Does it take care of the node management? No, because that was a responsibility of the task tracker. Okay? So the answer is actually 2 and 3. So the right answer for this thing is going to be 2 and 3. That is going to be task monitoring. That is the life cycle and resource management. So to whom has the life cycle management been given to? It has been given to App Master. The life cycle management has been given to App Master and the resource management is taken care of by the resource manager. Okay? So the fundamental idea of YARN is to split up the two major functionalities of the job tracker, that is resource management and job scheduling into separate demons. There we go. So in YARN, which of the following demons takes care of the container and the resource utilization by the application? Okay? This is very important. The term over here is application. Okay? So is it the node manager? No. Then the other two things are not there at all, job tracker and task tracker. It is application master who will take care of it. So can we run MapReduce jobs in a YARN-enabled cluster? That means I have written some code in my Gen 1. Can I run it in a Gen 1? Let me go ahead. Yes. Uh, because MapReduce on YARN ensures full binary compatibility and you can run it without any recompilation because there is a backward compatibility. So which of the following task is responsible for launching the task? Okay, what is a task? Task is nothing but look at a map task and a reduce task. Who is responsible for launching a map task and a reduce task? Task tracker, that fellow is not there. Resource manager or the application master, it is of course the resource manager. Oh, sorry, the application master. Resource manager is for the resource management. It is application master who will communicate with the node manager to launch the task. So like we said, the answer is application master. <coughs> now, this is the whole map reduce process that we are going to see, guys. Okay? And once we see this, you will see the anatomy, and there are a couple of examples, and then <coughs> you will actually go ahead and uh, look at the assignment. So let's quickly finish up this today. So <coughs> let's take this example. Supposing if you are having a file with three lines, okay, what is an input? Consider it as a block. Okay, the input is going to be a block. What is splitting? I told you what is uh, input splitting, right? So what is record split? So you will have to identify what is a record inside a block. 
So the splitting is going to happen at the MAP JVM phase and uh, uh, the result of the splitting would be something called as K1 and V1, that is key and value. Everything is going to be a key value pair. So now <coughs> I have got, there are six columns. In the first column, what do we do? This is a block. The second column is I have got a block. Inside that block, there will be multiple records, right? So there is a class called as record reader which splits or which converts a record into a key value pair. Let me document that over here. A input, a input is one block. <coughs> then uh, it is the record reader class record reader class which converts a record into a key value pair. So what is a key? <coughs> in the splitting phase, let me document it, in the uh, splitting phase, the key is going to be, just one sec, in the splitting phase, the key is going to be to be the offset point or it is also called as the cursor location in the file and the value will be the whole record, will be the whole record, okay? So if you take up this example, what is the key for the first one? It will be zero and then dear beer river would be the whole thing. So let me bring it like this. So if you see over here, you will see it is going to be 0, comma, beer, beer, and river. That will be for the first one. Then since it's a cursor point, you can keep on adding it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, plus 1, 16. Sorry. So for the second one, it will be 16, comma, car, car, river, keep on adding it, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and plus 1, 30, comma, beer, car, and beer. This is the way how the splitting would happen in your phase, guys. So this is what is the splitting thing that is happening, guys. So this is what will be the input to the mapper. And in the mapper, what are we doing? We are doing a word count. So what will we do? We will look at the complete word and split it into separate, look at the whole line, split it into separate words, and it would go ahead and use that using a string tokenizer. The record is one line, so the record separator is slash n. For knowing the word boundary in Java, we need, we use something called a string tokenizer, which will take a space as a delimiter. Of course, you can give anything else as a delimiter also, if space is not the delimiter. Let's say if you have got a name, so we need das, so we need space das is actually one as compared to we need and das, which are two separate words, right? So if I want to have a name, and then you will have to, in the data, you should have a record separator or a column separator which identifies that as separately. So by default, it is going to be a space that would be a word boundary. So then what do you do? You suffix one to it. So what happens when I suffix one to it? It will, uh, uh, by default, you are going to have a count. We are not going to think of any optimization. I'll simply look at the word, and I will suffix one to it. In the next class in the MapReduce program, we will actually write this code and see, guys. Okay? So what will be the output of the mapper? It is going to be a list of keys and values. Input is a key value, and the output from mapper is going to be a list of keys and values. Okay? Number one is the number of times it is present. Every word will be suffixed with one. Every word will be suffixed with one. Because even if there are two similar words, like over here, car and car, it will still be one comma one. That is where combiner would be helpful. Okay? Now, where is the output of the mapper stored? The output of the mapper is stored in the local file system. Okay? So the output output of the mapper is stored in the local file system. Okay? It is not in HDFS.
So now comes the secret sauce of uh, Hadoop, the shuffling phase. What will the shuffling do? Shuffling will ensure that it will bring together all the values of similar keys from all the different nodes where the mappers are executed. So in our example, if you look at the uh, example that we have, we have got 128 and 72, right? So we have got two nodes where the mappers are there. So the shuffler will bring together everything. Exactly, shuffling is like arranging. And I have got a very good uh, video on, on this. If you want to understand map reduce with the help of playing cards, so there is a fantastic video that is there. That is something that you should look at. Let me just search for map, radios, playing cards. So this is that article I'm talking about, Jesse Anderson's video on map radios with playing cards. Let me uh, copy the link location. I'm going to put it into the chat window and I'm going to put it into the uh, document also. Uh, let me click on send to all. Oops. Yep. I don't know why it is not going. I'll paste it once again and I'll say send to all. So this is the example of map radios explanation with the playing cards. With playing cards. Okay guys. <coughs> so uh, then what happens like I said all the values of the similar keys are brought together across nodes. So what will a shuffling ensure? It will ensure that you will get a single key and a list of values which are passed to the reducer and the reducer will do the aggregation and the output of the aggregation will be stored in the form of a final list of keys and values into your HDFS. This is the complete end-to-end -end way how your map reduce would work. Let's move on. So if you look at the anatomy of your map reduce, everything is going to be key and value. So in the map, you will get a list of keys and value. Key is the offset point, value is the whole value. The mapper will ensure that you will get a list of keys and values. The shuffler will ensure that you will get all the values of the similar keys together and the reducer will aggregate it and will get a final list of keys and values. Okay. So an output of mapper is nothing but input to the reducer, but then after the shuffling phase. See, the output of the mapper is a list of keys and values, whereas the input to the reducer is a key and a list of values. So that is what is the shuffling phase, converting or doing that transformation for you. So, Annie is back. <coughs> so input to the mapper is in the form of what? Input to a job is a uh, file, whereas input to a mapper is going to be keys and values, not strings. Input to a mapper would be keys and values, right? Okay? Because that's what we just said right now. Input to the mapper is always key and value. It is not string. Let's move on. So, yes, the mapper accepts a key and a value as an input. Okay? So, now we will actually see the word count example as an exercise that you will have to see. So see here, the assignment is you will have to set up the Eclipse IDE, okay, download all the MapReduce codes from the LMS and import them into the Eclipse IDE, write the MapReduce code, next time we are going to do it uh, in depth, understand what each line is about and we will run the code, but then please do some hands-on, there is a fantastic video that is there. So let me go ahead to edureka.co and show you, there is a very good video which is self-explanatory, you will have to watch that video, so this week you will have to do a lot guys. Please ensure that you cover up the map reduce part of it and next week I will actually be explaining what the code is all about. So if I go down to my module 3, if I look at my third module, see over here, this is what is module 3. If you look at module 3, there is a recording. How to run a map reduce program on Edureka VM, this is what I'm referring to. All the jars needed is given here. There are a lot of different data sets and things that we have. Guide to import map reduce assignments in Eclipse and look at the pre-work for your module 4. So please play around with these things that will give you confidence for the next session. This is all the pre-work. 
okay so watch the video attempt the various examples look at the interview questions what is yarn and also if you want you can set up your cloudera distribution for hadoop also there is a document and there's a blog that you can do and this is what we're going to talk about in the next case what is the input split i have already given an idea to you difference between input splits and block splits how does a job flow happen and we will actually do a map reduce program and then uh, understand that guys okay so with that we are done with our module number 3 guys